Don't believe for a minute that we in the United States will sit back and allow Obama to eliminate the American manned mission to explore space. We'll get rid of Obama first. We'll impeach him. Obama's announcement of his intention to murder NASA, the keystone of his Yamar shock style austerity package, is not just a way to save money or cut the deficit. It's a threat to the very existence of our republic. We're now coming to the final phase of a general economic breakdown that has been accelerating worldwide since 2007. In the United States, we have lost hundreds of thousands of productive jobs, unemployment is over 6 million, and half of our youth cannot find work. So for Obama to propose painful cuts to the people of the U.S. while continuing to bail out Wall Street is treasonous and impeachable. For Obama to propose a modern-day British model of Adolf Hitler's health care policy of 1939 to save money is treasonous and deserves impeachment. But to threaten the future existence of the United States by decommissioning the only means we still have for an economic recovery, cash-trading our potential for a science-driven increase in the productive powers of labor is morally disgusting, economically idiotic, and warrants President Barack Obama's immediate removal from office. As Lyndon LaRouche said, there is not enough room on this planet anymore for the United States and a President Obama in the White House. We are going to impeach Barack Obama. The crime has already been committed. There is no need to find a misdemeanor. The fact that he has failed to serve the duties of the office of the President of the United States is a crime. That he has acted against the interests of the United States and the American people, that in and of itself is a criminal offense. On February 3rd, two days after Obama made the announcement to scrap the U.S. manned space program, both NASA Administrator Charles Bolden and Secretary of Defense Robert Gates made public statements saying that no one in the White House had consulted either of them before adding the cuts to the budget proposal. It was then confirmed by sources close to the White House that the entire takedown of NASA was engineered by Peter Ortzag and the network of behavioral economists at the Office of Management and Budget. This grouping has no science orientation and is morally no better than the French Jacobins and the Rupp's Pierre who famously said, this revolution does not need scientists. The cuts were proposed recklessly and unilaterally without the consultation of the relevant departments or any consideration of how it would affect even minimally the United States national security. Moreover, Ortzag declared that the administration would not accept any compromises on this, that the cuts to NASA were non-negotiable, all the while neglecting to mention that the executive branch does not have the constitutional authority to dictate laws, to bypass the separation of powers granted to the legislative branch. So we're sorry, Peter, but it's not the president's decision. It's the decision of the Congress and a Democratic majority who the president has run roughshod over. Who does Obama think he is? The decider? This is the last straw, and now even the cowards in Congress have begun to stand up against Obama's continued Nero-like behavior and his insane attack on the program that most represents the nation's identity. As soon as the announcement was made, the House Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics met, with the ranking Republican speechless with rage at what the president had just proposed. The Democratic chair of the same committee, Gabrielle Giffords, made a statement in opposition to the budget proposal, saying, My concern is not the numbers on a ledger, but rather the fate of the American dream to reach for the stars. Should we falter? Should we slip? Should we let our dream fade? What will we tell our children? Citing Christopher Columbus and John Winthrop's City Upon a Hill, she said that the eyes of the world are still upon us, but... If we forsake our mission to explore the heavens, we shall shame the faces of many Americans who dedicated their lives to this vision. Our nation's scientists and engineers should only be constrained by the scope of their imaginations and the immutable laws of physics, she said, not by interest of expediency and budget. And Senator Richard Shelby from Alabama, who has NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in his district, said the budget proposal begins the death march for the U.S. human space flight. But congressional candidate Keisha Rogers for the 22nd District of Texas has made these cuts an issue of principle, saying that there is no separation between the idea of a manned space program 
and the idea of an economic recovery. Her campaign is championing a mission to colonize the moon and Mars as a driver for economic development here on Earth, a mission which will require rapid breakthroughs in fusion propulsion technology and investigations into the relativistic implications of 1G accelerated flight. On February 5th, she put out the call for Obama's immediate impeachment or forced resignation. And that is the issue. Some people will talk big about the atrocities of ending the manned space program and rage against it in the beginning stage of a fight, but how many among them have the guts to follow through and win the fight by impeaching Obama? Do you have the guts to see that you are going to lose your nation if we don't impeach Obama? The fact is that most people in Congress and in the population don't want Obama anyway. The nation cannot survive with him. The question is, do you have the guts to do it, or do you prize your fears so much that you will refuse to impeach him and lose your country? T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. <laughs>